Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Adora. If this is your first time stopping by, please make sure that you subscribe to my channel. I'm begging you. The subscribe button is here, it's somewhere here. So today I will be talking about, I will be introducing the concept of infrastructure as code. But before I start doing that, I would want to describe a very common scenario to you. So you've chosen a cloud, so let's imagine this now. You've chosen a cloud provider and you decided that, oh, I want to build some kind of serverless app and I want it to have a database. So you go like, okay, you go to the portal of whatever cloud provider that you've chosen and you and in your mind, you know that, okay, whatever app you're building, you know, you want it to be available in multiple regions, you know, because of whatever the nature of your app or the nature of your architecture is. So you go ahead and you go create multiple serverless apps in multiple regions and then you go maybe you need a database to be geo replicated as well in these regions that your apps are in so you go create some form some database depending on what what cloud provider that you're using so let's let me say azure for example uh i go create maybe dif like four different azure function apps in different regions and then i create a cosmos db and i replicate that cosmos db in four different regions the same regions that are the same regions that my as my function apps are in and then i'm like hmm, i need to create a load balancer so that whenever a request comes in you know i can based on where the request is coming from my load balancer can help me route to either the closest environment to me making the request or the freest depending on whatever it is and you do that maybe for like the environment that you're playing with as you are you know writing code and then deploying to be sure that everything works fine and then you're like hmm now it's time to move on and and you can be doing that in the beginning it might be good because you might be doing this and then you would also be like you could decide to be documenting what it is that you're doing okay so first of all i created a storage account and then i am i'm going to say okay i'm going i created a storage account and then after i created a storage account i created this key vault resource and then you write all these things down in some form of documents and everybody in your team can see and know that okay this is what you did when you were trying to you know provision your app is great however there's some times that in building the app here yeah, when you're building this app and then maybe you're testing it out in some kind of dev environment you will now realize that ah um i need to upgrade something or oh i need to add this or i was supposed to add this and then that whole process sometimes you might not document effectively right and then we get into this point where we're not really sure exactly, you know, how the infrastructure for this particular environment is set up again. So if you're supposed to do the same thing for like a different environment, right? Maybe you've done this for like your production environment and you want to go do this thing for like a staging environment. It's no longer the same as staging mirroring production or production mirroring staging or whatever, because it's not created the same way right and it's just going to be difficult for someone like so if maybe you are not the person that created the one for prod for the production environment you have to go meet that person that created it what did you do here um there's something that you did here there's something that's like i'm looking for information on doing this and doing this and doing that and the person points you to the document that they like to the place where they documented all the things that they did However, it's not the same anymore because some things have changed. I'm going to talk about infrastructure as code and how using and how automating your infrastructure actually makes this a lot easier. So I write code and it creates my infrastructure for me. And in doing that, your code is basically like the one place that you can go at any time for you to know exactly how your infrastructure is or what state your infrastructure is in so um it's like it's like okay i go here and then i can see that okay my 
infrastructure has this this and this the good thing about infrastructure as code i'm going to be calling this iac from here on out the good thing about iac is that you can treat your iac as you treat your code meaning that first of all you can test it out before you even say okay i'm going to deploy actual code to this thing when you finish writing your iac code that's it that's that's me saying infrastructure as code code when you finish writing the scripts for your IC, you can deploy, you can test them out before you say, okay, well, I'm going to deploy something to it. Like you would do like a normal code source script that you write. And, you know, you can also introduce some, you can, you can check it into source control. So you can actually version your IAC in some way, version your infrastructure in some way. You can do that. And if you can version it, this means that if there's some, maybe if you had created something that cost maybe small while in your code or in your infra, you can easily roll back. Everything is in the code that you write. So you can go to the code and be like, okay, this is what my infrastructure looks like. And you can deploy that code across multiple environments, right? So imagine you can imagine you have multiple environments. You have your dev environment, you have your staging environment, and then you have your production environment. You can deploy your IAC script. You can run that IAC script across multiple environments. Maybe that's how you set up your thing. So to run the IAC script across multiple environments so that you are sure that this this thing that's in my dev is also is in my staging and it's in my production so that you can be very confident and you can know that okay actually <laughs> my staging mirrors my production and you are not you're not shaking when you're saying it because you're confident that it's true right you can do infrastructure as code in two ways so there's the imperative way and then there's the declarative way in the imper in the imperative way you state what commands should be run and you write this in like a CLI so you say okay I want to create this resource group, then create this app service plan, then create this function app and create the storage account. And you explicitly state that. Doing imperative IAC gives you power. So you can actually declare how you want your infrastructure to be step by step. But the truth is it could get real complex real quick. So I'm gonna give you an example. Apart from the fact that you know doing this whole imperative way gives you power to write your scripts by yourself. If you run that script the first time, you know, and you try to run it again, you will always get a different infrastructure every single time. And and if by mistake maybe you were running it and then something happens it fails or maybe you were running the first time you ran it you gave it like a name and then you didn't change the name and then you run it again and then something happens and then it fails you'd have to you would have to like manually maybe try to add you know error handling like where did this thing fail where do i start from again to continue and it just gets real messy real quick and then this brings me to the second one which is the declarative um, way of doing IAC declarative IAC is you are basically defining or rather declaring the state of your infrastructure and then whatever provider you're using goes ahead to do all these things manually for you so I go the first thing I want to create now is say a storage account. Um, I just declare that I want to create a storage account. I declare the name of the storage account and any other properties that I might need. There are a couple um, infrastructure automation solutions out there. You have Azure Resource Manager, so you can use Azure Resource Manager to create, you know, infrastructure if you're using Azure as your cloud provider. You can use AWS Cloud Formation if you're using AWS as your cloud provider. You can use Google Deployment Manager if you're using Google GCP as your cloud provider. Now, there's some I, there's some infrastructure automation, automation solutions that you can basically use for like, you know, any cloud provider, depending on the ones that they support. But, um, I'll just give a few examples. You could use Terraform, Ansible, Docker, and Pulumi. And 
and these these IAC solutions, these four that I just mentioned, are not tied to like any particular cloud provider. So you don't have to be using Azure or using GCP or using AWS, whatever. Okay, so out of all these ones that I have mentioned, I have used Pulumi before. Pulumi supports TypeScript, JavaScript, C Sharp, Go, and Python. So you are you are already someone that can write code, right? Write the code that you know how to write to create your infrastructure. So if I was using Pulumi with TypeScript, for example, and I wanted to, you know, create this whole app infrastructure that I had planned out in my head, I would go to my Pulumi environment, you know, I would rather, I would start like a Pulumi project and I would create like a Pulumi project and I would create my different environments, maybe my, my dev environment, my staging environment, and my production environment. And I would declare the states of my different infrastructure here. So I would say, okay, um, I want to create this load balancer. And then I would create my Cosmos DB and I would give it all the regions that I want it to I want my database to be replicated in and I would create my function apps and I would give you all the regions that I want my function apps to be in and I would create depending on if I need a key vault I'll go ahead to create that if I need a storage account I'll go ahead to create that and I would have all these resources by just writing code there's something that I also wanted to say about you know declarative IAC which is that as opposed to imperative I see that you know when you run it again it might create like a whole new different environment for you you could run it multiple times and actually create incremental updates and finally I'm going to talk about mutable slash immutable infra and I'm going to use an example to talk about this mutable infra is infrastructure that can change that you can update I create a function app I create an app service plan to deploy that function up to and then along the way i'm like okay i need a cosmos db as well and then i go ahead and create that and it just updates my infra as opposed to like you know creating like a whole last new infra and then me using that and with immutable infrastructure as code for example you can't change it right you'd have to spin up like a whole new infrastructure and then so i'm going to give this and i'm going to i'm going to give an example to explain what i'm saying so we already know the infra that we have, which is the function apps deployed to multiple regions, you know, that have Cosmos DBs replicated in these regions. I have my load balancer and I have maybe my key vaults, right? I wake up one day and I'm like, my function app is running on an app service plan and that doesn't work for me anymore. I want to switch to Kubernetes for whatever reason. I want to go make this switch. So I'm changing. So I'm not going to be running on an app service plan anymore. I'm going to be thinking about how to move my app. And it might not even be, I might even be like, I don't want a serverless architecture anymore for some reason. I don't want to have a function app anymore. And I don't want it to run on an app service plan. I want to have an app with a different kind of architecture and I want to run it on Kubernetes. I could do this using the immutable approach so I would have to like update my infra and basically spin off like a whole ass new infrastructure, a whole ass new environment, and then test it out first and see that, okay, this thing works as it should work and everything is fine. We see problem, we see wala, everything is clean and we're all great. You can now decide to, you know, replace your old infrastructure with this new one and you'd have still had the old infrastructure running so if anybody is doing anything with that everyone is fine you might now replace the old infrastructure with the new one and if you had any data you could do like a data migration and then you'll be fine as opposed to you know just updating the whole infra straight up and then if something now goes wrong you now start pointing fingers or finding a way to revert to the state to the state that it was before that was working. You don't want to put that kind of pressure on yourself. So that's another thing that you can do, right? If you have used any IAC solution before, 
please be, feel free to you know let me know which ones that you've tried out and which ones that you think I should try out if you have never used IAC before and you were thinking about it I hope that this video has helped you you know understand what this is if you've never heard of IAC before and you've watched this video I hope you've learned something new if you like this video please make sure that you give it a thumbs up and if you are not subscribed to me please subscribe the button is here and thank you so much for watching this till the end i will see you in the next video bye